So fundamentally, what is the problem with the state? That... It's existence. <laughs> okay. Well, but but uh, uh, to play Angel's advocate again, <laughs> you know, government is the people. No, no, the... Come on, you don't you 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 you're say, you, you don't do you really think this? As best, I think it's possible to have represent, representation. Can you imagine if like you have an attorney, you're like, oh, you can't have the attorney you want. You're gonna have this guy who you absolutely hate, who you share no values with, why? Because he drives, I mean, leaders, political leaders and political representation drive the discourse. Like we, you know, uh, the, the majority of people voted for him or whatever, however, however you define that. And now we get to have a discussion, well, was this the right choice? And then we get to make that choice again in, yes. in four years and so on. First of all, the fact that I have to be under the thumb of somebody for four years makes no sense. There's no other relationship that's like this, including a marriage. Uh, you can leave any other relationship at any time, number one. Number two is- You could always impeach. But they did that. Part of it, I'm in, in just saying yeah. that there's, the, yeah, the mechanisms are uh, flawed in many ways, yeah. Yeah, right. And, and so that's number one. Number two is it doesn't make sense that if I don't want someone to represent me, that because that person is popular, that they are now in a position to. So having uh, um, representation and, and having citizenship based on geography is a pre-landline technology in a post-cell phone world. There's no reason why I have to, just because we're physically in between two oceans, we all have to be represented by the same people, whereas I can very easily have my security be under someone and switch it as easily as cell phone providers. So, okay, but it doesn't have to be geographical, it can be ideas. Sure. I mean, this country represents a certain set of ideas. Yes, it does. It started out geographically, it still it was is geographic. Both. It started off as ideas as, as well. It but was, like there's a, it's it was intricately, I mean, it's, that's the way humans are. Is there's, I mean, uh, there was no internet. So sure. it was, you were geographically in the same location and you signed a bunch of documents and then you kind of debated and you, wrote a bunch of stuff and then you agreed on it. Okay, I, so, so, you so. understand that no one signed these documents and no one agreed to it. As Lysander Spooner pointed out uh, over 150 years ago, the constitution or the social contract, if anything is only binding to the signatories. Um, and even then they're all long dead. Uh, so it's, it's this fallacy that somehow because I'm in a physical place, I have agreed, even though I'm screaming at you in a face that I don't yeah. agree to be um, subordinate to uh, some, imaginary invisible monster that was created 250 years ago. Uh, and this idea of like, if you don't like it, you have to move. That's not what freedom means. Freedom means I do what I want, not what you want. So if you don't like it, you move. Okay, just to put some, I don't like words and terms. <laughs> one, 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 zero, one, 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 zero, one. Yeah, exactly. Is that what your language like? It is, it is. I'm <laughs> translating it all in real time. But uh, would you call the kind of ideas that uh, you're advocating for and we're talking about anarchy? Yes, anarchism, yes. Okay, so let's get into it. Can you can you try to paint the utopia that an anarchist worldview dreams about? The only people who describe anarchism as utopia are its critics. If I told you right now, and I wish I could say this factually, that I have a cure for cancer, that would not make us a utopia. Uh, that would still probably be expensive. Uh, we would still have many other diseases. However, we would be fundamentally healthier, happier, and better off, all, all of us. Than democracy. So, uh, then demo uh, sorry, then I jumped back from the cancer. No, then democracy or, or government. So it's only curing one major, major life-threatening problem, but in no sense is it a utopia. So what, can we try to uh, answer this question, many, same question many times, which is, what exactly is the problem with democracy? The problem with democracy is that those who need leaders are not qualified to choose them. Those who need leaders are not qualified to choose them. So- uh, That's the central problem of democracy. Not all of us need leaders. So right. Would you, what does it mean to need a leader? Are you saying like people who are actually like free thinkers don't need leaders kind of thing? Sure. That's, but a, like, that's a good way of working. But like, it. you don't, uh, okay, so d d do you acknowledge that there's some value in authority in different subjects? So what what that means is, I don't mean authority, well, somebody who's in control of you, but- so, see, But you're doing the definition switch. Because yeah, I am, I am, yeah. you're right, you're right, it's unfair. Okay, that was, that was bad. 
Uh, but that's what they do. That's their trick. Yeah. And it's, this is uh, one of the useful things, by the way, let's just total sidebar. Yeah. If people ask me for advice, I always tell them, if you're going to raise your kids, raise them bilingual. Because I was trilingual by the time I was six, and that teaches you to think in concepts. Whereas if you only know one language, you fall for things like this because using authority in the sense of a policeman and someone is an authority in physics, it's the same word. Conceptually, they're extremely different. But if you're only thinking in one language, your brain is going to equate the two. And that's a trap that people who only speak one language have. For sure. But even if you know multiple languages, you can still use the trick of using sure, words to your convenience to, yeah, absolutely. To, to manipulate the conversation. But that, you weren't so trying to do that, do. but you, you fell into I that. accidentally but did it, people, yeah, you're right. We all tend to do that if you only speak one language and think yeah. of one language. But if, I guess, let me rephrase it. I, are you against, do you acknowledge the value of like, offloading your own effort about a particular thing to somebody else. Absolutely. Like an accountant, a lawyer, right, exactly. a doctor, absolute, a chef, a infinite. Isn't that ultimately what a democracy is? No. Uh, broadly defined, like you, you, you're basically electing a bunch of authorities. You're using the word you in two senses. You're using okay. the word you meaning me as an me individual, okay. now using you as a mass. Yeah, as a, as, a, as a mass, not you as an individual. Right, so I have, I would absolutely want someone to provide for my security. I would absolutely want someone to negotiate with me for foreign power or something like that. That does not mean it has to be predicated and what lots of other people who I do not know, and if I do knew them, probably would not respect, think about. It's of no moral relevance to me, nor I to them. So do you think this kind of, there could be a bunch of humans that behave kind of like ants in a distributed way, there could be an emergent behavior in them that results in a stable society. Like, isn't that the ho hope with anarchy is like without an overarching... Uh, uh, but ants, I, I mean, ants, ants are the worst example here because ants have a very firm authority. The queen? Right? Yeah, and they're all, they're all drones, they're all clones of each other. Yeah, but uh, so if you forget the queen, the, their behavior, they're all, <laughs> well, from your perspective, from your human intelligent perspective, but from their perspective, they probably see each other as a bunch of individuals. No, they don't. Ants are very big on altruism in the sense of self-sacrifice. They do not think the individual matters. They routinely kill themselves for the sake of the hive and the community. But they, that, see, that's from the outside perspective, from the individual perspective of the individual, they probably, they they don't see it as altruism. Right, but they, they, they view, and they're right, because the ant's life is very ephemeral and cheap, that it's more important to continue this mass population that that one individual ant live. Like bees are another an even better example. The honeybee, when they sting, they only sting once and they die. And they do it gladly because it's like, okay, this community is much more important than me. And they're right. Yeah, okay. So fine. Let's forget. I'm, I'm being I mean, pedantic, but it's important, I think. I'm not I, just, I, just I, being pedantic I, for the sake of being pedantic. But there's something beautiful that I won't argue about because I do, there's an interesting point there about individualism of ants. I do think they're more individual than, but look, let, let's let's give your view of ants that they're it's they're communists. Okay, let's go with the communist view of ants. Okay, yeah. Uh, but they're still a beautiful emergent thing, which is like they are, can function as a as a society and without, I would say, centralized control. But, yeah, it's, I agree it's with another you. argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is that the hope for anarchy? It's like you just throw a bunch of people that voluntarily want to be in the same place under the same set of ideas and they kind of, like the doctors emerge, the police officers emerge, the uh, the different necessary structures of a functional society emerge. Do you know what the most beautiful example of anarchism is that is just beyond beautiful when you stop to think about it? And I'm, not, I'm not being tongue in cheek. Okay. Language. There's infinite languages. Language, the things that language can be used for are bring tears to people's eyes, quite literally. It, it, it's also used for basic things. No one is forcing us. We speak two languages each, at least. No one's forcing us to use English. No one's forcing us to use this dialect of English. Uh, it's a way, and and despite there being so many different languages, uh, lingua franca emerge. You know, people, the language that everyone is uh, Latin. Even in North Korea, they refer to the fish and the different animals by the Latin scientific uh, uh, note. No one 
decided this. Sure, there's an organization that sets a binomial nomenclature, but there's no gun to anyone's head referring to uh, sea moth as a Pegasus species. And when you think about how amazing language is, and in some other context would say like, well, you you need to have a world government and they're deciding which is the verbs and you have to have an official definition and an official dictionary. And none of that's happened. And I think anyone, even if they don't agree with my politics or my worldview, cannot deny that the creation of language is one of humanity's most miraculous, beautiful achievements. Absolutely. So there, there you go. There's one system where a kind of anarchy can result in in beauty, stability, like sufficient stability, and yet dynamic flexibility, yeah. flexibility to adjust it and so on. And the internet helps it. You get some, something like Urban Dictionary, which, yeah. which starts creating absurd, both humor and wit. But also language and syntax and jargon. Immediately yeah. you size people up. If you use if you say vertebral, I know you're a doctor because that's how they pronounce it, the, the, the spinal column. Uh, I'm sure in your field, there's certain jargon and right away you can know if this person's one of us or not. It, the, I mean, it's infinite. I mean, I don't need to tell you anyone. There's emojis there's, too. Yes, there's so much there to study with language. It's fascinating. But do you think this applies to human life? The the meat space, the physical space? Yes. The, so these, this, that kind of beauty can emerge without uh, without writing stuff on paper, without laws, you could have rules. You don't need. To, they don't have to be laws. So enforced by violence, like that's what. what what's a law? A, is lo this... a law is something that is unchosen. A rule is something. If I go to my pool, you know, I I sign up to be a member of a pool. On the wall, there's certain things. It's like you know, certain number of people in the pool. No peeing in here. <laughs> Good luck enforcing that one, um, and so on and so forth. Well, that's the problem. Aren't you afraid that people are going to pee in the pool? that's not as my big a concern as mass incarceration, as the fact that the police can steal more money than burglars can, the fact that uh, innocent people can be killed with no consequences, the fact that war can be waged and with no uh, uh, consequences for those who waged it, the fact that so many men and women are being murdered overseas and here, and the people who are guiding these are regarded as heroic. So you think there might that in, in an anarchist system, there's a possibility of have of having less wars and less, what would you say, corruption and uh, less abuse of power? Let's talk, yes, and let's talk about corruption because, and I made this point on Rogan, you and I, again, this the Russian background, we realize that when it comes to corruption, American is very naive. Corruption, they think, is, oh, I got my brother a job and he's getting money on the table. That's not, when we're talking about like state corruption, things that are done in totalitarian states, and even to some extent in America, like Jeffrey Epstein, Jillian Maxwell, things that Stalin did, things that Hitler did. Uh, you know, when the CIA was torturing people at Gitmo, they had to borrow KGB manuals because they didn't know how to torture correctly because they never thought of these things. We, it's very hard for us to get into the mindset of someone who's like a child predator, someone who, uh, let me give you an example from my forthcoming book. There was a guy who was the head of Ukraine in the 30s. I forget his name. Now, these old Soviets, they were tough. I mean, they pride, Stalin means steel. You know, they pride themselves in their cruelty and how strong they were. And this was the purge. You know, Stalin is trying to, you know, killing lots of people left and right. And his henchman, Beria, uh, had the quote, uh, find me the man and I'll find you the crime. You know, they would accuse someone and they would torture him until he talked and confessed. And then he had to turn people in. And they took this guy in like, beginning of the year, I think it's 36, 38, he was head of Ukraine. By May, he's arrested. And they take him to the Lublanka, the basement in the Red Square where they're torturing people. And they put, they did the works on him. And he was a good Soviet and he stood up and he, they, who knows what they did to him? He didn't talk. So they said, okay, one moment. They brought his teenage daughter in, raped her in front of him, he talked. So when we talk about corruption, we would never in a million years think of this. That's not how our minds work. Um, so when you're talking about states and people where you don't have ease of exit, where you are forced to be under the auspices of an organization creating a monopoly, that leads to, in extreme cases, but in not as extreme cases, really uh, nefarious outcomes. Whereas if you have the option to leave as a client or customer, that would have a strongly limiting effect on uh, how a business and what it can get away with. So, but don't you think 
maybe, I don't know who the right example is, whether it's Stalin, I think Hitler might be the better example of, don't you think, or Jeffrey Epstein perhaps, don't you think people who are evil will, will find ways to manipulate human nature to attain power? no matter the system. Yes. And, and like the 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 corollary question is do you think those people can get more power in uh, in the democracy in a, you know in when there's a government already in place. They they can it's easily they get more power more dangerous to have a government in place. First of all, sociopaths are known for their charm and for right. their the warmth. Here's the two situations. In in a free society, I'm a sociopath, I'm an evil person, I'm the head of Macy's. In a state society, I'm an evil person, I'm a sociopath, I'm the head of the US government. Which of these are you more concerned with? It's like night and day. So you would have far more decentralized military, you would have far more decentralized um, uh, 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 security forces, and they would be much more subject to feedback from the market. If you have an issue with Macy's or any store with a sweater, it, look at that transaction. If you have an issue with the state, to you, hiring a lawyer costs more than a surgeon. To even access the mechanism for dispute is going to be exorbitant and price poor people out of the market for um, res, uh, conflict resolution immediately. So right away, you have something that's extremely regressive. Uh, and even though this is touted as some great equalizer, it's quite the opposite. So in current society, there's a deep suspicion of governments and states. There, not, that's and, not really. Well, well like you, just your example of Macy's, I mean, d don't you think a Hitler could rise to be at the top of a social network like Twitter and Facebook? Okay, and let's I, suppose I, Hitler ran Twitter, okay? Uh, now, let's take this thought experiment seriously. Yeah. Literally, what could he do? So all the, the only tweets are gonna be about how much the Jews suck, right? Okay, fine. Okay, all the cool people are leaving. There could be some compelling, like you said, um, Evil I, people are charming. There could be some compelling narratives that could be with conspiracy theories, uh, untruths that could be spread like propaganda. Like, it, it does Every criticism of anarchism is in fact a description. All well, the strongest criticisms of anarchism are in fact descriptions of the status quo. Your concern is under anarchism, propaganda would spread and people would be taught the wrong ideas unlike the status quo. That's not even a criticism of anarchism. I, I'm not actually criticizing. It's an open question of, uh, it's an open question of in which system will human nature thrive, be, be able to thrive more? And in, in which system would the evils that arise in human nature would be more easily suppressible? There, uh, that's that's the open sure. question. For it's a, a scientific a, experiment, and I'm asking only from a perspective sure. of the fact that we've tried democracy quite a bit recently, and we, I don't, maybe you can correct me, we haven't yet seriously tried anarchy on a large scale. Well, we don't need to try to, uh, so anarchy isn't like a country, right? It's it, like, it's you can't, I'm not, it's like saying, well, if anarchy works, how come we've never had an anarchist government, right? So anarchism is a relationship. And language is an example of this. It's a worldwide anar anarchic system. You and I have an anarchist relationship. There's almost no circumstances we'd be calling the police on each other. I mean, it's I'm asking the same question in a bunch of different directions. Out of born out of my curiosity, is why is anarchy going to be better at preventing the darker sides of human nature? Which presumably a criticism of government. Oh, because it's because of decentralization. So the darker side of human nature is an extreme concern. Anyone who says it's gonna go away is absurd and fallacious. I think that's a non-starter when people say that everyone's gonna be good. Human beings are basically animals. We're capable of great beauty and kindness. We're capable of just complete cruel and what we would call inhumanity, but we see it on a daily basis even today. Uh, and what's interesting is the corporate press won't even tell you the darkest aspects because that's too upsetting to people. So they'll tell you about atrocities and horrors, but only to a point. Um, and then when you actually do the homework, you're like, oh, it's so much worse than, like that thing about Stalin, right? So we know in a broad sense that Stalin was a dictator. We know that he killed a lot of people, but it takes work to learn about the Holodomor. It takes work to learn about what those literal tortures were and that this is the person who later FDR and Harry Truman were shaking hands with and taking photos with and was being sold to us as Uncle Joe. You know, he's just like you and me. Um, so when you have a decentralized uh, information network, 
as opposed to having three media networks. It is a lot easier for information that doesn't fit what would be the corporate American narrative to reach uh, the, the populations. And it would be more effective for democracy because they're in a much better position to be informed. Now, you're right. It also means, well, if everyone has a mic, that means every crazy person and with their wacky views. And at a certain point, yeah, it has to become, then there's another level, which is then the people have to be self-enforcing. And, and you see that on social media all the time where someone says this, the other person jumps in. So you, you think, but isn't social media a good example of this? Like, so you think ultimately without centralized control, you can have stability? Like, what about the mob outrage and the mob rule, the the power of the mobs that, that emerge? The power of the mob is, is a very uh, serious concern. Uh, Gustave Le Bon wrote a book in the 1890s called The Crowd, and this was one of the most important books I've written because it influenced both Mussolini and Hitler and Stalin, and they all talked about it. And he made the point that under crowd psychology, human and lynching is another example of this, None of those individuals or very few would ever dream of doing these acts. But when they're all together and you lose that sense of self, you become the ant and you lose that sense of individually, you're capable of doing things that like in another context, you'd be like, I, I'm a, I'm, I should kill myself. I'm a monster. So but you're worried about that. But I, like, I, 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 is, isn't the mob, doesn't the mob have more power under anarchy? No, the mob has much less power in anarchy because under anarchism, every individual is fully empowered. You wouldn't have uh, um, uh, gun restrictions. You would have people creating communities based on shared values. They'd be much more collegial. They'd be much more kind, as opposed to when you're forcing people to be together in a polity when they don't have things in common. That is a get like, like having a bad roommate. If you're forced to look at jails, if you're forced to be in locked in a room with someone, even if you at first like them, after a while, you're going to start to hate them and that leads to very nefarious consequences.